The ability to safely and efficiently create fire is something that we take for granted. Ignition is just a click of a button or a swipe of a match away. But it was not always this easy. Not by a long shot. Early methods of generating fire were time and labour intensive, such as fire sticks or flint and steels. Other methods were not always practical, like burning glasses. If the sun isn't out, you're out of luck. Matches, however, changed all this. Matches traced their roots all the way back to 6th century China. These matches were simply sticks dipped into sulphur. These required an external ignition source, but the sulphur was easy to light and the stick itself helped the flame to burn long enough to be useful. The 19th century brought the advent of self-igniting chemical matches. These matches relied on sulphur heads coated with potassium chlorate and sugar. They were dipped into concentrated sulfuric acid, causing them to ignite. These matches were expensive, and far from safe. According to a contemporary account, instead of a brilliant flame, the match smouldered only, and spurted acid to the detriment of clothes and a peaceful disposition. Developed alongside chemical matches were the early versions of friction matches, ones which are closer to our modern matches. The first of these were designed by British chemist John Walker. Walker's matches consisted of a head of sulphur and a tip of potassium chlorate, sugar and antimony sulphide. These matches were ignited by drawing them through folded sandpaper to generate friction. These matches were relatively cheap and mostly reliable, but they had a few issues. Namely, they would, on occasion, send a burning fragment of sulphur flying, as well as sometimes igniting with accidental friction. These dangers caused them to be banned in a few countries, including France and Germany. For our next advancement towards modern matches, we need to take a trip back to 1669 into the labs of a German alchemist. Whilst boiling down copious amounts of human urine, instead of creating the gold he was seeking, he discovered phosphorus. White phosphorus has one particularly important quality for our purposes. It ignites exceptionally easily, so much so in fact, but it spontaneously ignites when it comes into contact with air. This allowed for a new kind of match design, one that was cheap and reliable. These matches generally used a mixture of potassium chlorate and phosphorus over a head of sulphur. The phosphor-potassium mix would ignite when heated via friction, igniting the sulphur, which in turn ignited the wood. The white phosphorus used had a few drawbacks, but the major issue was its toxicity. Users of the matches could inhale the toxic fumes of combustion, and a box of these matches contained more than enough phosphorus to kill an adult, if ingested. The true toll of the toxicity was suffered by the workers in the match factories, primarily poor young women. With constant exposure to white phosphorus, many developed a disease called Fossy Jaw. This unpleasant condition consisted of the degradation of bones, primarily the lower jaw, infections, brain damage, and often death. In the mid-19th century, the first versions of modern safety matches came into being. These were safe for two primary reasons. Rather than using the highly toxic white variant of phosphorus, it uses the much less reactive and non-toxic red phosphorus. In addition, the phosphorus is no longer in the head of the match. The phosphorus has been moved to the outside of the box, which has a striking surface composed of red phosphorus and powdered glass. As the match is struck against it, the glass generates heat via friction, and a tiny amount of the red phosphorus is turned into white phosphorus. This ignites in the presence of air. This in turn ignites the match head, which is primarily potassium chlorate. Because of the repositioning of the phosphorus, safety matches are not likely to ignite from friction alone, meaning they are much less likely to be accidentally ignited. This, along with the lack of white phosphorus, makes these matches much safer compared to their predecessors. We are, of course, moving away from matches. Lighters are easier to use and inexpensive, but we shouldn't forget just how useful matches have been to us. Well, at least once we perfected their design. If you liked the video, perhaps consider subscribing.